Hey everyone, it's Brooke. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a review of Marlena by Julie Bunton. This is a lit fic novel about two young teenage girls and this sort of very seductively obsessive friendship in small town Michigan around like 2006, 2005, that kind of era. Um, Marlena uh, dies tragically at 18. You're told that in like the first page, so it's not not a spoiler. And it's how that death affects Kat, the other main character, going forward the rest of her life or until she's 36. Um, yeah, so that's the general overall plot thing you guys have told me that you want. I'm going to put the book down now. So I picked up Marlena a couple of years ago. It came out in 2017 on the strength of its writing. The first paragraph of this book is one of the strongest first paragraphs I've ever read. I'm not going to read the whole thing again here, but I do want to read the first sentence because I think this paragraph only gets better once you've read the whole book. And this first sentence is like the most perfect thesis statement I've ever read. Um, and it is great. And the sentence is, tell me what you can't forget and I'll tell you who you are. That is absolutely what this book is about. This is this is about Kat, who cannot forget. She cannot leave her very short-lived best friend Marlena in the past. She can't. She, she is, even all of these years later, basically, you know, 20 years later, she's still incredibly affected by the tragedy that happened when she was 16. Um, so, yeah, we alternate timelines between Kat growing up in New York and then her looking back on her from like 15 to 16 years of age in small town Michigan. Um, and I wish I could tell you that the strength of the writing kept at that same pace throughout the whole book, but it didn't. And that was my very first disappointment. Uh, there are a couple of sentences here and there. There are, there's one page in particular I think that was had a lot of really interesting things to say about female friendship in particular. But overall, uh, it was mostly a fairly straightforward written story. Uh, and that was kind of a bummer. Uh, it's funny because I think there are books that are way overwritten. And then I think there are books that are underwritten. And sort of like Goldilocks who wants that perfect balance in the middle. And I think an author like Liz Moore, um, who wrote like The Unseen World and Heft, I love her so much because she knows when to let her writing shine and then when to kind of hold back and let character or plot take center stage. And I think Julie Button wants to be the author. I think I can see the author in her wanting to come out, but it's too forced and like it's not coming supernaturally. And this is the debut, so that could change. I just, I don't think she's there yet. Um, I kept wanting to have like a conversation with her and be like, Julie, what are you doing here? Like, this is not good. And so that's, that's not good because I'm not in the story then. Um, whereas when I read like Liz, Liz Moore, when I read The Unseen World, I never thought about her. She was never present. It was just all about what the book was telling me. So, so yeah, that was a bit of a disappointment. Um, but that's okay. A book doesn't have to be the most gorgeously written thing ever. It just sort of set out in a very beautiful way. Um, so it set me up with this expectation. And if a book doesn't meet the writing expectation in lit fic, let's, let's be very specific, um, I looked at character next. And if the characters are amazing, again, it could totally, totally make up for anything the writing wasn't doing for me. And again, this book let me down. So you have Kat, who's 15. Her parents are recently divorced. Her and her brother are moving to this really small town, kind of on the coast of northern Michigan. They don't have a lot of money at this point. And she's coming from quite a place of money and privilege. So this is, she went to like a private school. She was a scholarship student, I think, but still, she's gonna be going just to the regular public high school like the rest of us did. And um, she's living in basically a, a mobile home. Uh, so it's a fall from grace. Her mom is still very tortured by what happened and um, not always very present. Um, her brother is kind of all over the place. Um, and then next door, she meets this girl, Marlena. And Marlena is two years older. She's 17. And 
Jenkins. She lives in this barn that's been sort of converted into a house. And they begin this friendship that is super intense from like the get-go. Um, this is quite the lit fic trope. If you've read books about female teenage girls in the literary fiction world, you probably encountered this relationship that pretty much always goes, there is the more submissive good girl who gets completely wrapped up and like taken with this sort of, the, maybe the older, but whatever. She's just the kind of the bad girl, the one who lives faster. Generally tragedy is going to happen. Um, and that dynamic is just, gosh, how many times have I read that book? It's been in books like, um, the Girls from Corona Del Mar by Rufy Thorpe. Uh, I hope I said that right. It's been a while since I read that one. It's present in like the Neapolitan series by Elena Fronte. Things like The Girls by Emma Klein. The movie 13, if you've seen that. Um, and even in The Animators by Kayla Ray Whitaker, which I love personally. Um, it still has this, a sort of similar dynamic. And that means when there's such a pervasive thing theme that, that's being written about that I have read extensively um, or experienced in pop culture extensively. I'm automatically going to compare it to all of those other renditions that I have come across and um, ask myself, what, does, what is this book? What is Marlena doing that those other stories did not? And unfortunately, for the characters of Kat and Marlena, there's nothing new here. In fact, I would say there's even, there's even less here. Um, and that's unfortunate really unfortunate because I just feel like if you're going to tell the story, a story, a trope that's been told a bunch of times before, you better bring something new to the table or else I'm just going to be bored and I was so bored and the ending, like what happens to Marlena, is so anticlimactic. It's just, I don't know, and I think I get really frustrated because I feel like this is the only depiction of friendship between young teenage girls that ever really get happens in, in lit fic? Like, why? Why is that the only thing that writers want to write about and the readers want to read about? I don't understand. And I am someone who grew up having a friendship very similar to this. And so I also compare it to my own life. And I also feel like these books, they're generally always told from the good girl's perspective. So we never get this kind of narrative voice from the bad girl, the one that tragedy happens to. And a lot of that's because, hey, generally speaking, that girl is dead and she can't tell her story. Why not though? Like I want, I don't always want to hear from the good girl. I was the good girl in my version of this friendship. Um, so I want to hear from the other side, you know? Like I, I want more of that and it just never seems to be that way. And maybe it's because the good girl has the more even like voice of reason and but it just offers no agency to this other girl who we just judge we just judge her right and she doesn't get to have a voice and i think there's something kind of gross in that i don't know i'm getting a little annoyed with it uh i also feel like a little bit of agency though is taken away from the good girl in all these stories because she she is always so swept away by the like the other the, the the bad girl that she doesn't get to retain an individual identity a lot of the time and I think that might be my biggest problem with this is that I was like this but I, I even had enough even at 13 where I, I could say no I could feel like no I don't want to do that you know you know I never did drugs in my life I said no a lot <laughs> um, and I know not everyone does but I feel like that story never gets taken because that's just not interesting. Um, so it's, it's, I just wish that both girls just, they just deserve better in my opinion. And I think I'm looking for that now and I'm never finding it. Um, yeah, so that, that didn't, that didn't work. Cat as an adult, looking back on things definitely didn't work. I mean, her New York chapters are only like three to four pages a piece. That is not at all enough to get into get inside her like psyche and the like she's a, she's an alcoholic she's clinging to this past and it's not explored well at all because you get these really long drawn out Michigan chapters and these short choppy adult cat New York chapters and that messes with pacing first off which was annoying 
and it's just not enough to make me care about adult cat and not enough to understand adult cat um, I don't know I didn't I didn't I didn't love this book I thought it had some very major flaws mostly that it just doesn't live up to the stuff in this this tropey kind of subgenre that I've enjoyed I love the animators by Kaylee Ray, Ray Whitaker. I think part of that is because they're both older and the storytelling of the friendship is a very similar friendship, but I think that the good girl and that one gets to retain her own, her own identity far more than other stories I've read. So I enjoyed it more. Even though the ending was done, it was a mess. I still enjoyed that book way more than I enjoyed Marlena. Um, what Marlena does well though, I do want to talk about what Julie Button does well here besides the first paragraph um, in her thesis statement. I think her atmosphere and like her, her sense of place, I, I automatically felt like I was in small town, northern Michigan. Like I could see this place, this Silver Lake is the, is the city. I could see like, I could see their, the barn next to the, the mobile home and I, I could see their school and the roads they were describing and like the trees, I could feel the cold. Um, so she does that really, really well. And another thing, I've kind of attacked Julie Bunn, I think, a lot on nuance and how her story just doesn't have enough different going for it to kind of differentiate itself from other stories told similarly. But, so you have Kat, who her and her mom and her brother are not financially well off. At one point, they have to go on food stamps. Like, they're struggling with money in a very serious way. Living directly next door to Marlena, who is basically poverty. Um, her dad cooks meth. I'm not sure he works or has a job. She has to you to come to like basically Marlena's, I mean, Kat's house to eat. This is a very bad situation. And they're literally living next door. So they would probably be considered sort of socioeconomically the same, except their experiences are so different. And I think that's really important. I think in a lot of stories that can get lost, how you could be neighbors with someone kind of potentially look very similar, but have such different stories to your life. Um, and then be in such different places places, and have privilege affect you very differently. Um, yeah, so I thought she did that so well. I wish that she could have just borrowed some of that nuance and found a way to kind of leak that into the way she structured the friendship. So yeah, so that was, that was Marlena by Julie Bunn and my personal thoughts. <laughs> The U.S. is really fucked up right now, especially with this Brett Kavanaugh Supreme Court crap. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to read any more lit fic for the rest of the year because I just, I don't have it in me to read misery porn or women not being happy or men being shitty. I just don't, I don't have it in me. And there's, there are shitty men in this book. I do want to make that known. There are shitty men doing things to two girls. That is awful. Um... So yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to read any more lit fic at the moment, but I am glad to have read this. Uh, I, I recommend it to you if you are interested in this dynamic and you haven't read a lot of it. Um, I think you'll enjoy it if this is like kind of the first experience you're having with this. And yeah, I think that's, I think that's me done, guys. I will see you next video. Bye.